Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we'll be focusing on developing and backtesting a strategy based on price channel breakouts. If you're new here, I recommend watching our previous episode where I introduced and explained the code for our custom Python based price channel indicator. I'll leave a link in the description below. Now let's dive into today's topic, carry out with the backtesting part. In the previous video, we presented the code to detect price channels. In a nutshell, we are detecting, first of all, the uh, fractals, so the uh, high points of the candles and the low points of the candles. So a fractal is a point of the candle, for example, that is higher than all the neighboring candles. At the same time, if it's lower than all the neighboring candles, it's also a um, low fractal. In this case, we are detecting different fractals. So the lows and the highs, we are applying a regression to fit these into a slope. And we are keeping these slopes in memory as um, a channel to define a price channel. Then we try to detect the breakout when the price goes out of this channel. And we assume that when we have a breakout, the price is going to continue in the same direction. So if the price breaks above the uh, channel, price is going to take an uptrend. And if it breaks below the channel, the price is going into a downtrend. Testing this indicator visually seems to be working perfectly fine, which left us curious how it would perform on a long-term strategy. This is why we are conducting the full backtesting today. So for the backtest, we're using Python as usual, and you can download the code from the link in the description as well. So you don't have to rewrite all the code from scratch. Okay, starting, we are going to load our data. So we're taking 10 years, 20 years worth of data from 2003 up to 2023. This is what we have used in the last video as well. I'm using back candles 45, and this is the window of candles uh, over which we're going to detect the fractals, the highs and the lows, and we're going to detect our channel. So the first function we have presented in the previous video as well is called is pivot. It's going to detect if a candle is a pivot point or is a fractal point. This function takes two parameters, the candle index and the window, meaning the number of candles to be considered left and right of that particular candle to check if this candle is higher than all the highs or lower than all the lows of these uh, neighboring candles. I usually take two or three candles on each side of the uh, candle of interest. The function is pivot is going to return one if it if the candle is a pivot high, so it's a very high candle that is higher than all the neighboring candles. It's going to return two if it's a pivot low, three if it's both, so if the candle has a high that is higher than all the neighbors and a low that is lower than all the neighbors prices as well. And in any other case, it's going to return zero. In this cell, we are applying the is pivot to detect the pivot candles using a window that is equal to three. We're creating a new column in our data frame called is pivot. It's going to uh, return the signal of this particular function is pivot and save it as a new column for each candle in our data frame. Then we need to collect the channels or detect the channels. So we're looking 45 candles before the current candle. And I'm saying 45 because I took the number of back candles as 45. This is a parameter that you can modify in your program. So this is the parameter that is right here in the cell. So going back to our channel, we're going to check for each 45 candles the um, high fractals and the low fractals, if these are in number above three. So if we have at least three lows and three detected highs fractals, we're going to uh, fit these using a regression, a linear regression into a slope. And this function collect channel is going to return the parameters of these slopes. So it's going to return the slope of the lows, the intercept of the lows, and the R value of the lows, as well as these parameters, but also the parameters for the highs. And in any other case, so if we don't have three lows and three highs detected within 45 candles window, we're going to return zeros. So now our function is ready. We can apply it to um, the data that we have, to the CSV file, collect channel for the for each candle from the data frame using the back candles and the window. So, and we are saving all the results in a new column called the F channel. One more function before proceeding with our back test, it's is breakout. It's going to detect when we have a breakout outside of the price channel. So for each candle in our data frame, we're going to detect the channel column, which holds the parameters of the channel. So the intercept, the slopes of the highs and the lows, as well as the R squared values. Then we are detecting the breakout in the following uh, approach. 
So the previous candle, the high of the candle should be within the channel. So it should be above the slope low. And the previous candle's closing price should be below the uh, low. So this previous candle is breaking from inside of the channel down below the channel. But it's still overlapping the um, the slope of the lows. Then the current candle, the open price of the current candle is completely below the lower slope and the closing price is also completely below the, um, uh, the lower slope. So we have two candles, one is breaking out of the channel and one is completely outside of the channel. When this happens towards below the channel, below the lower slope, we return one as a signal and if it happens above the slope, above the slope of the highs or the high fractals. In this case, we return two because we have a break above the channel. In any other case, we are returning zero. So then we can run this function over all the candles and uh, check the result, save the result in our data frame in a new column called is breakout. Remember that if we have is breakout one, it means it's a downtrend signal. If it's two, it's an uptrend signal. And this breakout signal is what we are going to feed to our backtesting strategy. So I'm defining a signal function that would return the value of the is breakout column from the data frame. And this is the signal function that we're going to use in our backtesting uh, strategy. So for the backtesting, we're using the backtesting library as usual. The initial size a lot size is 10% of the equity. And then we have the um, signal right here. The signal function is called the take profit stop loss ratio. I'm using 1.2 for the moment. And if the signal is equal to two and the length of the trades is equal to zero, meaning we are only allowing one trade at a time, the stop loss is set to the low of the previous candle. In the case, it's a buying uh, signal. It's a buying position that we are taking. So we're looking at the lowest point or the lowest price of the previous candle and this will be our stop loss point. The take profit is set accordingly so it's taking into account the take profit stop loss ratio distance. In the opposite case when we have a sell signal and we don't have any opened trades we're going to set the stop loss at the highest point of the previous candle and the take profit is set using the take profit stop loss ratio. Then for the first back test, I'm using a cash of $1,000 and a margin of one over 50. No commissions for the moment, so we can compare this strategy with the previous strategies we have. And anyway, on the daily time frame, you don't have to worry much about the spread. It's non-significant. However, we do have to worry about the swap and if we carry out the um, the open trades overnight and from one week to another week. So this is something to keep in mind for the future. Now, the moment of truth. Let's check the results. So we have full return percentage of 140%. The buy and hold return is minus 3.22%. And we have a maximum drawdown of minus 77%, which is really disappointing. Uh, at this point. So I would have expected better from this strategy. To be fair, actually, I didn't spend time optimizing the parameters. I simply put whatever I thought was best out of experience, but it might not be the case. The winning rate of 47%. So it's not that bad. So as expected, it didn't perform well over probably eight years. And only in the last couple of years, we had this rise in, in the equity. Let's check if we can improve the um, trade management and make this work better. But before that, if we take a look at how our indicator is performing, we can try and guess what's going on and try to correct it. So basically, we are looking for channels breakouts. This part, for example, this is a losing trade here in red. If I take those minimas, like three minimas here, and we perform um, an artificial slope, and then the highs, we have a slope here. This candle is indeed a breakout, probably indicating a future downtrend. And this is what happened here. This is a sell position that was stopped at this point. In this one, we have a small channel probably here. So this is a high, it's higher than the uh, three neighbors here and three neighbors here. So it's considered as a pivot high. This one as well, it's a pivot high. So we have two pivot highs, probably a third one somewhere around here. I don't have the signals on this chart. And then we have three pivot lows. So this one is a pivot low, this one as well. 
and this one as well. And what happened is that we have apparently a break above the channel. It might be also considering this point, and in this case, it's even worse because the segment or the line of the slope would be, it's not very representative of these candles. So it also depends on how many candles, how many back candles you are taking into account. And this is very dynamic. And this is the, the part that is a weak point in our program. We're taking a fixed number of candles, 45. It can be 30, it can be 35. But in reality, it's not fixed. So the market is going to change, the shapes are going to change. So we have to find a way to make this more dynamic. And again, right when we have a break below this uptrend channel, so we are announcing a future downtrend, we take a selling position here, which also is stopped at this point. So in, in my opinion, I think this one is more correct. I mean, we coded this uh, program in this way. So we have an uptrend, we have a certain channel, then a large bar, um, a candle breaks out of the channel, below the channel. It's a selling signal. We took a selling signal at this point and it didn't work out, that's okay. But some other trades could be corrected. Another point I'd like to mention here is the trade management. So even if the signal is working well, if we're not managing the trade correctly, it's going to end up in a loss. We can take this candle as an example. So we have an uptrend channel and apparently a candle broke above this channel. So we're announcing a continuation probably of the uptrend. We took the, um, um, the trade right here. It could have been a take profit as this, at this point but it didn't work out, so we were stopped, although the uh, the price kept going on for two consecutive days after the trade was taken. Some signals were much better, like this one. So, for example, we had a clear downtrend channel and then a break above the channel and a spike in the price, but in this case, we didn't take advantage of the whole price movement or the price range. And this is mainly because we're not managing our trades. It's automated in a very simple way. And in reality, it might be uh, a bit better if you have a bit of experience in trade management. And to prove this point, I'm going to introduce a very simple trade management in my backtest right now. So we can do it very quickly. Instead of putting one position with a stop loss and a take profit, we're going to use two positions and two take profits. The first take profit is going to be at one third of the distance of the original take profit. So we have two take profits and two trades. In other words, we're closing half of uh, the trade at one third of the take profit and we're leaving the other half to the full take profit uh, potential. Same thing, I can add this uh, selling part here for the short positions. And um, so far we had 140% in return now I'm going to run this again, exactly the same parameters, and now we have 200% in return. It's still a um, strategy that needs to be optimized. It's still not ready to be automated and to put into an algorithmic trading bot and so on. So we are aware of the um, large drawdown percentages. However, this proves that the trade management plays a crucial role in your trading. It's not only about the indicator, you might have the perfect indicator. If you don't implement a good trading management, it's not going to increase your profits. So before I end this video, I'm going to point you out towards the parameters that you can, uh, you can optimize this strategy for. You might want to experiment on the back candles number. You might want to experiment as well on the window parameter. I'm using window equal three, so it's three candles for each side. You might want to increase this to five on the daily time frame. It's very understandable. Another parameter that I think might play a role is the number of pivot points you want to consider before you fit these into a, a slope. I'm just looking for these. So for the moment, in this example, we took three lows at least and at least three highs to um, consider fitting the prices into a channel. So you might want to increase this to four or um, uh, three by two and two by three. You have different combinations to uh, test on. And you might also want to consider being more restrictive on the quality of the fit uh, of the highs and the lows. So when we are fitting the highs and the lows into um, a slope, we need to have a certain R squared value and this value should be above a certain limit. So I, I would say it's 0 0.9 at least or 0 0.85. I didn't include it in this example because I didn't want to make things very complex at first, but 
If you want to go the extra mile, you might want to experiment on these. And I think most importantly, it's how you manage the trades. And anyway, this is a, a different topic that we can treat in a whole different video because there are lots of ways we can manage the trades and automate the trade management. I know you might be a bit deceived. I also expected better from this indicator, but um, all the indicators that I have tested in the past started in much worse results. And then by applying a bit of optimization, things got better. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Please don't forget to subscribe and support this channel. I'm waiting for your feedback. And until our next one, trade safe and see you next time.